The six biggest commander storylines. It is caught! Delivered at six o'clock sharp. It's the pick six at six. We set out to find a leader, someone who could take this franchise to the next level, build an elite team that consistently competes for championships. Well, they've been so good so far this year. So many different players contributing. Let's start off with... Number one. Number one uh, is a guy that I I had the, the, the pick this week. And I said, the, the pass rush needs to get home. They need to figure out how to get pressure on Kyler Murray. And they signed uh, a particular player in the offseason to be their most prolific pass rusher. And this guy... Well, he, uh, I think he wound up with a half a sack officially getting credited for, um, but he, he showed up in the, this aspect and others. And that is Frankie Luvu. Um, Luvu played a really, really solid game on Sunday. Um, you see his mobility, you see his physicality, you see some of the pass rush juice in a way um, that I don't think we had seen as much of so far. And I mentioned a play during first and 10 off the top of the show where um, he is in a stunt where he's, he's like, act cause the thing is with Luvu, like sometimes he is playing as a blitzing linebacker and, and getting pass rush that way. And he, he helped jam up the pocket a couple times doing that. But also sometimes he lines up on the edge and he legitimately is a, a rush edge. And there was one stunt that he ran with John Allen where Kyler got rid of the ball quickly and it wanted to be a completion, but you're like, Oh, that was it. And if they can start hitting that stuff more often, Anthony, I think they can start to turn up the pressure on, on a lot more than just Kyler Murray with a, uh, let's call it mediocre uh, offensive line for the Cardinals, but but against good, better lines and, and guys that, uh, you know, are better quarterbacks as well that, that maybe aren't as limited in the pocket as Kyler is. Yeah, I think he also ran that sim- uh, that same stunt with Deron Payne uh, when they went. I'm sure. We used to call it like Cinco package when Ron was here. I'm not sure what yeah, they call no, it they, now. They, that's another thing that I'm glad you point out. Like they are running some three, four fronts. Mm-hmm. Um, and they used to call it the Cinco package where they had five linemen on the field, but it was all linemen. Now it's three down with four or like with two standing linebackers. And sometimes it's Fowler. Sometimes it's Armstrong. Sometimes it's Luvu. Sometimes it's Jamin. Yep. Uh, sometimes it's John Baptiste. But like they, they are legitimately running a hybrid defense that is sometimes four down and sometimes three down. And then they're doing crazy stuff on third down. Like they got, they got two dudes standing up, dudes floating around. Like the dude who might have his hand in the ground is Deron Payne, but he's lined up as a defensive end and you got three dudes standing next to him. They're doing crazy stuff on third down, which I, I thoroughly enjoy. But yeah, that they are they are really starting to mix some stuff up and it makes it very unpredictable. And they're using the thing is like they're using skill sets, right? It's how do we design something around our guys? And for Luvu and also for Jamin, like they are using Jamin to drop in zone blitzes and like, oh, I thought you changed into pass rusher. Well, he's still a better coverage guy than any other edge player that they have outside of Luvu. And so they're using him as a zone dropper in zone pressures. And so there's just some really good innovative stuff that's happening, and I think Luvu's at the center of it, and I'm excited to see him. Uh, I'm excited to see him continue to run into people very forcefully, Anthony. That is that is really my takeaway from he, this game. He, he forced a fumble too, though, right? Yeah. On Michael yeah, Wilson? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I mean, that was so late in the game that you almost forget about it, but yeah, they got a turnover. And who was it? It was Frankie Luvu. Mm-hmm. Good job, Craig. Way to use your number one pick effectively. In that the that was a great, great number one pick. Your number, your number one pick was pretty good, too. My number one pick was Jeremy McNichols. And again, on Friday, I really, I didn't expect him to, you know, have the same impact as an Austin Eckler. I just wanted him to be solid. But him being solid, you know, turned into him running hard and being able to, you know, rattle off a 27-yard touchdown run. Also being able to convert a fourth and one. Um, and he was out there running hard. You know, he he was out there to spell uh, Brian Robinson. And he did a hell of a job doing that. He protected the ball. He caught the ball. He did everything that you needed, you know, for a... I guess back at running back to do, and he did it well. So very good to uh, see him go out there, um, lead block for Jaden Daniels one yeah. one play. He just does he everything went, went that for you, for uh, B Rob on some others. Yeah, whatever you need him to do, he will do that for you. And I think that's why you know he's an Adam Peters guy because they see uh, he, he does whatever it takes to you know win. Jeremy McNichols blocking, whatever. played well enough that he earned himself snaps when Eckler is back. Mm-hmm. Like that dude runs hard like you want to talk about the identity of this team because i think he was a captain for this game technically he's a special teams captain but like 
whatever. Like he played like a captain. He played like a guy that like, I'm going to set the tone and to do that in a limited amount of snaps. Nevertheless, like the efficacy, like good job, Jeremy Nichols, like running the football is hard when you're not in a rhythm and he just comes in. He's like, I'm gonna run for a touchdown. Look at me go. And he just runs through tackles, runs through arm tackles, hits the hole when he's supposed to hit the hole, hits it hard, gets through like that dude. They trusted him in big spots, big pass mm -hmm. protection situations, big blocks and then obviously you got uh you know you don't know the touchdown runs gonna be a touchdown run but you do know fourth down's pretty important and they give the ball to him on fourth down so um they did a really good job of using oz who we'll talk about next um but talk about uh using oz as kind of an eckler replacement for a lot of stuff but there's just certain stuff that running backs need to do and mcnichols picked up uh that stuff in a in a tremendous way Number three. Alameda Zacchaeus. Uh, I will give credit to Linnell Willingham, so you know this is going to be good. Um, Linnell, we were we were at Wizards Media Day earlier today, and he goes, did you know that OZ only played 18 snaps? And I was like, what? Yeah. The impact that dude had in 18 snaps. You want to talk about being out there with a purpose, being out there with intention. Um, they did a great job early. You know, some of the stuff that Cliff designs really well. That first third down, they, they get that little out route. OZ, easy catch, gets up the field. Um, some of the the orbit actions and, and some of that stuff, which is, you know, I don't know how much of that he knew already versus like, hey, we need you to run these motions and, and be in these places this week. But there are times that he lined up in the backfield and motioned out. Is They didn't hand him the football any, but they, they clearly just said like, Who's the guy on our team that is most like Austin Eckler? We can't replace Austin Eckler, but who is the guy that we can run some of our Austin Eckler stuff for in the past game that we think is the most dangerous? And the answer was Alameda Zacchaeus. And so they ran it for Alameda Zacchaeus, and he did really well. Six catches, I think it was 85, 84 yards, something like that. I mean, he had a heck of a day. And, you know, that that is, I think, a great reminder in general, like for all of us. These dudes in the NFL are freaky athletic. Like there are just do like there are great athletes all over this league. And some of like and that's what makes the guys who are the most special so ridiculous is like the Christian McCaffreys amongst everyone else are that much better. But there's a lot of dudes that if they were just given opportunities could put up some pretty significant numbers and Alameda Zacchaeus is one of those guys and the 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 enthusiasm he brings is something Dan talks about a lot, how how into it he is for his teammates on the sideline. And then he goes out there and, and puts up a uh, performance like that. Uh, great job for all the reasons that we picked him on Friday, right? The reason we said is like, who's the guy that we think can replace Eckler? And while he doesn't get any huge explosive plays, he, he gets a couple of really nice chunks, keeps the offense moving, made the offense as reliable as it has been. And um, good job, OZ, on all that. Yeah, OZ was a heck of a pick, heck of a day for him. Number four. Number four, my number two, Jeremy Chen. Good Jeremy pick, Ch good pick. I think, he are, I think he had his best day as a commander yesterday. Granted, the first drive wasn't all that great, but outside of that, like, he bounced back and he was able to, you know, just have a lot of impact in the game. He came down, he was a short tackler. Um, he, I think he had seven solo tackles, um, which is huge because, again, tackling in space and just tackling your man in general has been a, a struggle for all of uh, Washington defenders. So the fact that he was consistent in that in that uh, aspect. Also, he had a huge hit on special teams. I'm on a kickoff. Yeah, I thought uh, it's interesting. Like, he and Quan are both playing kickoff coverage. Yeah. They're yeah. just like, screw it. This is a chance. And, like, I think it speaks to the mentality of DQ, right? Like, hey, this is a chance to make a play. This is a chance oh. to, like, we know we're going to get hit on the ball. And so let's stick two guys out there that can go stick their nose in and force a fumble. And they did. They just didn't recover it. Um, yeah, I, I think it was a great pick. And I, I think Chen did have his best game. He's continued to get better and prove why. Like, he's the guy. He's the starter for a reason. They, they picked him up for a reason. They stuck with him through two games that were probably overrated in their badness by the fans yeah. and, and media um, because he was worth it because he was going to knock the rust off and be good. And last week, you know, against Cincinnati, that play he makes on Gasecki where he shows some range. He had a couple more like that where he just fires off and you're like, dang, that dude can get there. I don't know that I want him in the post covering the entire field, but if he's a cover two safety, he can be responsible for his half just fine. Yep. And the way he breaks on the ball, I mean, I think it's a combination of awareness and skill, right? There's so many plays where he is a safety and he's in his zone 
and he sees a, a quick game happen in front of him, and you have to get there, and you have to be sure-handed, and you have to not only make the tackle, but you have to make the tackle backwards. You have to make sure the point of the catch is where the route stops, not a guy catches it, turns, and if he just spins forward, it's an immediate tackle, but he spins forward and gets some extra couple of yards, it goes from third and three, or maybe that's fourth down, to a first down, and a seven-yard game becomes 10. And Shen is fantastic at arriving and being like, this is all you get. When I have arrived, no more forward progress. And, yep. and Shin's ability to do that with consistency is fantastic. The other thing I think I'll say real quick on Shin, uh, Anthony, is his presence in the run game unlocks Luvu to do some of the stuff that he did. Because he plays in the run game like a linebacker, like Luvu at times can shoot gaps and do stuff that like other smaller players sometimes do because you can trust that Shin will actually hold his gap. And to be able to have that kind of speed on the field and like it lets Percy Butler, you know, play really fast and like just be that single high safety that rockets down into the box and stops run plays or does what he does over the top. But like Shin's ability to kind of do the the bigger guy stuff in a little guy's body with a little guy's skill set for the most part is is special and I think unlocks his defense. It keeps it balanced, right? You can't just run at him because he can actually take on a guard and and shed him and, and make a block and, and not get put even even if he doesn't make the play, hold his gap in a way that most safeties can't in the box. And that is a really, really special and important trait. Number five. Number five was Emmanuel Forbes. Well, I think had a, like, I'll put it this way. If this had been week one for Emmanuel Forbes, I think we're all pretty happy with how he played. Um, he, I know we have this this silly take command promo running right now that um, I'm trying to get off the air as soon as possible because Emmanuel earned it getting off the air. Where I think the last time we saw him, some of his effort like wasn't there. He wasn't playing hard enough. He played hard yesterday. Um, he did all the things he was supposed to do. I think in a couple of weeks. That uh, comeback route that he he whiffed on, right? The one of Michael Wilson later in the game where it gets completed on the deep comeback and Emmanuel runs by it and he, he swats the ball and he's late. Give him a couple of weeks. Let that hand get a little bit healthier. Let his timing and his, his, his rhythm get a little bit better. And we might see our first Emmanuel Forbes pick six. I, I think he's going to take a couple of weeks to understand and, and trust in this defense and say like, all right, these are the things I can give up. These are the things I can't. But he did stick his nose in there. He did play. You know, obviously it took him a while to get on the field. They, they started with Sainer still on the outside. No egg Benogane played well again on the inside. So um, I think they're probably going to keep rotating those guys to try to keep them fresh. Um, and Noah brings a physicality that I think they like. But having Forbes as part of that rotation is huge. And, you know, credit to, to BSJ. We talked about this in first and 10. BSJ traveled with Marvin Harrison. I did not think that was going to happen. Um, but having Forbes as another outside corner, as someone who can you rely, like, you rely on to do their job is really important. And, you know, in the run game, he, he's not exactly the most physical guy. He's not necessarily making tackles, but he'll go dive at a guy's knees and that can set the edge just as well as, as running into him. And so as long as you, you get the job done, that's all that matters. And I, I think Emmanuel Forbes, by and large, had to get the job done kind of game. Had a missed tackle, I think, in the run game later in the second half. But again, like I'm willing to give him a couple of weeks on that stuff as long as he's trying and he's in the right place and he's given a solid effort because that's part rust, as we talked about with a guy like Chin. And so I, I think all in all, I don't know that it was, P I can look it up, but I don't think his PFF grade is going to be awesome. But like I give on the pass fail scale, no doubt that Emmanuel Forbes passed in his return. I like what I saw. Uh, yeah, his his thumb, once he figures it out, I, I think he's going to be good. It definitely did look like he was a little hesitant um, on everything. But your honest. timing can be rusty. Like that is... Yeah. That is what it is. Let's see. His PFF grade was, yeah, it wasn't very good. It was a 46, tackling 24. But, like, he missed a tackle or two, okay? Like, pretend it's week one. Are we like, hey, okay, dudes missed tackles in week one. Yeah. It's got to get better. That's not saying it's okay, but the stuff that, that got messed up this week was not the stuff that has been messed up for him in mm -hmm. the past, and that's an important distinction. Number six. Number six was uh, Mr. Marvin Harrison Jr., and Craig, I think we did a good job on uh, Mr. Harrison Jr. Um, granted, the first drive, he definitely had a couple of catches. And I was thinking, you know, this is going to be a long day for the commanders. 
Um, first play right to him. Second, uh, and then they drive all the way down fourth, fourth and three or whatever it was, fourth and inches. They throw the tud over um, Noah Igbenogany. But after that, I think the rush helped, you know, the back end, you know, us sending all the blitzes and things of that nature. Didn't, you know, we, we didn't give Kyler Murray those opportunities to be able to find Marvin Harrison uh, Jr. down the uh, down the field. So I'm not going to necessarily say it was all the back end, but I think the, the rush definitely had a huge factor in, you know, limiting, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr. and also what Kyle America did. It takes a village. It takes a village. Uh, <laughs> to, to stop, stop a number guy, one? To stop the guy that's that good. And it takes the safeties over the top. It takes Benjamin as the corner who did the, the bulk of the work. It takes Joe Witt Jr. figuring out what is it that we need to do. After that first drive, he's like, screw it. No one's covering him except for BSJ. Like, okay, fine. We're not We're not letting you get these matchups that you want. Um, and Benjamin did a great job. Again, did he give up nothing? No. It's unreasonable to give up nothing in a 60 minute game to a star stud receiver, which Marvin Harrison absolutely is. He had had like 130 yards each of the last couple of weeks after a slow week one. And they, they did a really great job on him, but it also helps when, you know, when, when the rush gets home and um, those two things are married and, and excellent job by that pass rush unit. Excellent job by Joe. And, and th- something I wrote in my notes, um, that I think is worth pointing out on both sides. I wrote it at different times in the game about each coordinator. I wrote, Joe is not scared. Cliff is not scared. The way that Joe called the game defensively, leaving at times one-on-one man coverage on the back end, maybe, or just one-on-one coverage with one safety to cover the entirety of the field, um, and getting some extra guys in the rush, making things muddy and complicated. And then Cliff, you know, the amount of times he trusted Jaden in the drop back game, I think it was a really well coached game. Like generally this team is well coached. They're not making a bunch of dumb mistakes in the way that they have in the past and that poorly coached teams do. But I also think this particular game, they did a good job of feeling out the game and figuring out what was working and and not. And that lets all the things we just talked about, about those six players, five of theirs and one of, and one of the Cardinals uh, pan out the way that it does. Hey, this is DA and you're listening to the Hoffman show on the team 980 and the Odyssey. 